So, now something completely different. This is not a case study. Actually, this is mainly for PhD students among you. Uh, last week in uh, Nantes, there was a big YAPSA conference, which had a special session for PhD students, which was called My Thesis in 180 Seconds. That's what this here stands for. So the point was to present the PhD thesis, ongoing or even already finished one, with one slide in three minutes. Interrupt, uh, nobody interrupts you in those three minutes. And I, when I first heard for it, I applied, but it looked simple to me. But when you want to do it, it's not simple anymore because you need to present your thesis from the beginning, so from, from the problem to motivation, your idea of solving the problem, and what do you expect as a result. And you need to present it to audience that is not, not all of them are closely related to your topic. So you need, you cannot put 20 equations because nobody will understand you. So uh, this is my presentation. I've done, uh, but in France, this little thing here, it was timing, and when it hit zero, uh, they turned off the microphone. So you cannot continue and go over. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't time me because uh, when this was last week, I practiced, and last night we didn't practice. I mean, we did, we did, but not this. So I will try to do it, uh, uh, and I challenge all of you who are PhD students, you don't need to present it, but try to summarize your thesis as simple as you can, but with clearly defined. Why are you doing something? What exactly are you doing? What do you want to achieve? And what's your plan on how you will achieve it? So you have a problem your idea of solution for that problem, and uh, what do you expect as a result, which is not always quite simple. So I'll start now without the timer, but I'll try to do it like I did it. And okay, you can, you can but don't, don't, don't show it to me, you can just. Uh, and the best thing about this uh, session is that there was no questions after it. So you just presented, <laughs> applause, and next. <laughs> so, okay, we can start. So, uh, my name is Dominic. I work at the Faculty of Civil Engineering at the University of Zagreb. My thesis is titled Probabilistic Assessment of Existing Road Bridges Using Bridge Weight in Motion. And the main motivation for this topic was two facts. First one is that in Croatia, there are no official guidelines for assessment of existing bridges. While on the other hand, majority of road bridges are 40 or more years old, designed according to all codes, and they need to be reassessed in order for their use. So the idea was to define uh, some assessment method which will use SHM and probabilistic approach. And we started with bridge weight and motion measurements as a chosen SHM tool. So that's a SHM tool which measures vehicle as they drive over the bridge. And you get not only traffic data, but also structural response of the bridge, which is very important. And we combine that with probabilistic approach and Bayesian updating of material properties of the bridge. All that combined, we defined in a multi-level assessment method using SHM. And in the first part of the thesis, we applied this method on three case study bridges. And the results show that there's a great increase in bridge reliability and automatically extension of the service life of those bridges. But when you look from the perspective of bridge owner, the question is, is that cost effective? And that presents the second part of the thesis, which is ongoing case study in this cost action. So we try to define the value of information obtained with this type of SHM, and in the end, is it cost effective? We are in process of doing that, but some preliminary results are very good, and we are hoping that the final result will show that using this plus value of information can lead to optimized bridge management. And just for the conclusion, official thesis is that the implementation of these measurements and this approach 
can lead to extension of bridge service life, overall reduction of maintenance costs, and optimization of service life management. And that's it. Well, How much? We have 39 seconds left. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, maybe I was a bit too fast, <laughs> but that was kind of the point. Just the only difference was that it was in auditorium for 800 people. But there wasn't there 800 people, but it's a big stage, like you are giving a TED talk, so of course I was a bit more nervous. <laughs> and I wasn't hangover. <laughs> Yes, okay, I will. So, bridge weight in motion, for those of you who are not familiar with it, first, without bridge, only weight in motion. It's a, weight in motion is a, those are sensors who are built into the pavement and they measure the vehicle as it drives over them. The information that they give you is how many axles the vehicle has, weight of every axle, gross weight of the vehicle, plus vehicle <coughs> speed. And uh, it was way in motion as an idea started in the 70s. And uh, way in motion data was used, but data from the late 80s was used for development of Eurocode official uh, traffic load model for design of new bridges. But they used only limited data a uh, small, small sample, and that's why that uh, Eurocode traffic model is very conservative. And if you apply that model on assessment of existing bridges, uh, no bridge which was designed by older codes can be assessed as safe. And bridge weight in motion as an idea is uh, that those sensors are not put into the payment because when you put them into the payment, they are you cannot move them and you need to close the traffic. Uh, bridge weight in motion is an idea that uses the bridge as a weighing scale. So you apply sensors on the bottom side of the bridge, you calibrate them, so there is only minimum interruption on traffic on the bridge or sometimes uh, you can do calibration while the traffic is on so you don't have to close the bridge at all. And it gives you, it. Uh, even has more accuracy and it gives you not only traffic data but structural response of the bridge under the load which can um, which are very useful information uh, for the analysis of the bridge state so the influence lines and dynamic characteristics and dynamic response which is very important and we can, which can show you the, uh, not only the state of the bridge but state of the pavement of the bearings expansion joints <coughs> etc so we in this method we defined uh, two types of bridgeway motion uh, monitoring, short and long term. Short gives you only the structural data, but not the dynamic characteristics. And it can only take one day of measurements. Long, uh, it gives you dynamic characteristics, and also it gives you enough traffic data, which if you use extrapolation methods or Monte Carlo simulations, you can predict traffic load in some certain return per period, but you need at least two months of constant monitoring. So along with Sebastian, this February we build a decision tree where we define three strategies. One is without any monitoring, which we use as a reference. One is with short term and one is with long term monitoring. And we are in the process of finalization, we are still defining some costs because there are many, many related costs. Not only cost of the bridge, cost of the bridge repair, but many indirect costs. Uh, because it depends, if you close the bridge, it depends if there is a bridge two miles after it or if there is no bridge in radius of 30 miles. It depends how many daily traffic is on that bridge and many other things, so there are many indirect costs that we are trying to model, but some preliminary results show that in many cases on existing bridges, short-term monitoring is always a good investment. Long-term we didn't yet define, but if the bridge is in bad state based on, uh, based on only on, on the 
load carrying capacity assessment, it could also be profitable. And that's the kind of whole idea. And that, that value of information model is one of the case studies of cost action, but it was presented in Italy, in Portugal. We don't need to present it again. Thank you. That's kind of it. Uh, questions? You calculate this value of information. You consider the, the value this information has for assessing this particular bridge. Yes, we did. But there is also an additional value, of course, that you said, you said if the bridge is part of a, a highway, so the traffic that goes over that bridge would be almost the same traffic that goes over the next bridge. Yeah, so that, that's, next bridge yeah so but uh, that's, there are two types of data, traffic data, yes. but also the structural response, yes. which you cannot, you can use the same traffic data for next bridge. But you cannot use dynamic response and structural response. Oh, this yeah, yeah. But, but the, uh, it's yeah, yeah. the main uncertainty is often from the traffic, because the traffic yeah, yeah. model of your code is often everything. So the traffic is the Yeah, yeah, yeah. If so you have a benefit, a, and, I mean, yeah. in Germany, they put these things and they will not put them on all the bridges. Yeah, yeah. On one, and then they, they try to update the traffic model. Yeah, for, for example, for develop for development of traffic model, that's that's enough. You don't need to monitor every bridge. You find the best one which best suits you, and uh, because it's not the same. If if it's a viaduct, it's viaduct bridge. It's too high. You cannot reach it from the bottom. So you find a bridge which suits you, where the the installation is will minimize the cost. So yes, for traffic model, that's enough. I mean, my point was also to say that you have to read that that would be, I mean, people in Germany, they have not done this value of information analysis, no? but they just say, okay, we put this on one bridge, and then we don't put it on other bridges, because they think that yeah. if you have it from one bridge, it's no more cost effective to put it on the next bridge. So, yeah. because the additional information you might get from the fonts is maybe not... Well, uh, once you know the traffic, it's not the Yeah, I know, but uh, for example, it gives you a um, realistic influence line, and that can tell you a lot of the state of the bearings of expansion joints. Uh, so it's kind of, uh, it gives you the, the kind of data which uh, you obtain with load testing when you open the bridge. Is there a lot of certainty on the influence line? I mean, I'm not an expert in such. Uh, it seems to me that the influence line is pretty... Well, uh, you know, for example, influence line for, if we are talking theoretically, influence line for simply supported beam, oh, sorry. Influence line for this, for bending moment in the middle of the span, looks like this. If this is a middle, And this value is span divided by four. So it means if you put force of one here, moment here is force multiplied with this. In reality, nothing looks like this. It looks like at least like this because so when you when people were doing assessment, they were doing some of them even doing simple uh, 1D models, and they are very conservative. They use this kind of influence line, and they put a traffic load model on that, and they said, no, this bridge cannot hold the load. So first step was we build a 3D models, and then we calibrated them with this influence line. There are some uncertainty there, but I think. Because we of the got it. Conditions? What? Because of the because of the yeah, yeah. Because boundary conditions in reality, in th theory, in bridge design are, for example, like this. In reality, they are nothing like this. So, so we are trying with, with. There's no point loads uh, Yeah, there's no point loads, and of course, in reality, bridge girder is. I don't know, one meter, and then you also need to use this height to additionally reduce the, the, the influence line, plus you need to use the width of the bearing, so it goes on and on. But that's why we, on each bridge we monitored, we saw that uh, 
it gives significant reduction of bending moment in the middle. And uh, we are using it mainly on, on road bridges up to 40 meters span because uh, by, uh, I think, script project was in Germany and they made a survey on 10, 10 roads, on trans-European roads, and majority of bridges, road bridges, are simply supported or continuous with a span of up to 30, 40 meters, and mainly pre-stressed and concrete. So we choose that type, because uh, this method is not for landmark bridges. You cannot take, I don't know, Milau Viaduct and say, it, okay, I mean, you could maybe, but that kind of bridge requires special assessment. But this was for these small bridges, which are kind of neglected, at least in Croatia, and they're in really bad state.